Hello, everyone. Today we are going to take a tour of three historical spots in Hollywood. It will take us 20 minutes walk from the start point to our third destination. Through our tour, you will have a taste of multiple historical cultural monument and enjoy the historical site from the private residential small project to the public gigantic concert scale project. Yes, exactly. It will be no doubt a fantastic and exciting tour for you to show up now. The spot we are standing at right now is the half hillside of where the Freeman House located. We could see the neighborhood are quite peaceful from this side of the hill where we are standing at. And later on, we will see the other side of the neighborhood is the obstreperous traffic. All the three spots we will see today are all along the North Highland Avenue. But since the Freeman House is located on the hills. Which somehow could separate it from the actual traffic noise, so it keeps slightly buffered from the public area. By passing the current decade constructed residential building, we are almost there, closer to our first spot, the Freeman House. Then let me give you guys a brief introduction about this historical conservation project. It was designed by Frank Lloyd Wright in 1923, and was an example of Wright's early modernist architecture. The structure is noteworthy as one of the four textile block houses built by Wright in the Los Angeles area. The pattern we are seeing on those textile block is abstract eucalyptus figure, as well as the partial hollowed-out approach to emphasize the aesthetic on his concrete block system to the side. This first glimpse we see this house must be this concrete block, but since the sunlight today is really bright, we could see the condition of this block module have already exhausted and spoiled. But at the time that Wright just finished the design, his idea was intended to completely fuse the housing project with the site. So he tried to mix the local earth with the concrete itself, while the salt contained in the earth crystallized in the later years. So the result we are seeing now today is by pushing out the mortar and rebar, or even some of those rebars exposed to the air. Which were rusted, but then you will ask: In such a wasted and vulnerable condition and situation, how the building could stand over the earthquakes? In fact, the project has been donated to University of Southern California for academic research already, and they did a lot of renovation to prevent the damage happens all the time. They put effort on reinforce the structure. Including renovation to prevent landslide, since the house located on the natural and crashed the hill, as we could only see one level from the entrance side of God. Well, actually, if the other side was deeply inserted into the hill, which were a two-level building, and as we just saw, on the top of those concrete block wall, having those silver colored towers. Which actually are tomato cans that USC put in order to reduce the possibility of oxidation, and also there are 28 feet columns being inserted under the lower level for the supporting structure system. In general, the Freeman House should impress us already for those details representing Wright's initial idea, concept. And enlightenment on those marvelous system in the history of architecture. Instead of walking by the North Highland Avenue, we decided to walk along the hillside in order to see more residential houses by comparing with the historical one right at that. Now we could notice that the best view can be made here towards the direction of the famous Hollywood sign, and can easily see the whole busy traffic flow under the hill. So it is quite a tremendous spot 
that both we can enjoy in the urban heat and the nature chilling. Also, we could tell the city great by look far into the distance. Actually, there are several major streets that traverse the southern part of the area in a grid-like formation. The presence of the Hollywood Freeway Route 101 in the middle of the CPA, which is noted as the Hollywood Community Planning Area, and the Golden State Freeway I-5 and the Glendale Freeway SR-134 freeway to the east and north create various access points to the Hollywood area from multiple different regions. So significant volumes of regional trips are made through the CPA to or from the Hollywood Freeway. Actually, in Hollywood, there are a number of reasons why the standard street dimensions cannot be achieved or may not be appropriate given the character of the streets and the land uses along them. And the route we are taking on today is one of the examples. The reasons that many streets in Hollywood will not likely ever be widened is the historical nature of the area. Since the three spots we are looking at today are all historic buildings in Hollywood that would have to be displayed to implement the roadway cross-sections called for by the current standard street dimensions. In order to reflect the historic nature of those Hollywood communities as well as to make them more pedestrian-friendly and conducive to transit usage, a block-by-block -block review of the existing and proposed street dimensions was undertaken as part of the community plan update. The need for adequate sidewalk paths and parkways to buffer pedestrians from moving cars was considered, as well as the number and location of historic buildings that would preclude street widenings. Now we arrived at our second spot, the Highland Camrose Bungalow Village. This is kind of different from the Freeman house we just saw, whatever from the housing type or the target audience. It is a unique example of working class housing in Hollywood during the early 20th century. It was developed between 1900 and 1924 during rapid growth in the Hollywood film industry. The original 14 California bungalow homes, designed by the Taylor brothers and the Lee Campbell, were connected by a series of secluded stairs and walkways. The architectural style of these structures, known as craftsman bungalows, reflecting a lifestyle that includes harmony with nature restfulness and simplicity. These homes were constructed to be durable and simple, yet comfortable and charming. In the early 1990s, a number of the structures were removed to create the picnic area and the remaining structures were rehabilitated to create office space. And Highland Camrose's bungalow village is the only known example of an authentic craftsman bungalow hillside cluster development in California. It is listed in the National Register of Historic Places as a historic district. We could see the picnic area which is called the Highland Camrose Park now just beside the community to provide people who live and work in the community space to do activities and hang out. Comparison to the Freeman House, it is located just by the west side of Busy Street and the entrance and exit of the freeway. So much of the privacy is thanks to the lofty, leafy, eucalyptus trees and rubber plants that shade the bungalows in the parks. As we are passing by the side of the North Highland Avenue, we are arriving our last visiting spot, the Hollywood Bowl. Compared with the previous two spots we just saw, 
it is embedded into the valley, which is away from the mainly traffic and surrounded by those forests in order to generate an isolated space for the purpose of concert stage and completely buffered from the residential zones around. Wherever across the North Highland Avenue or on the way up to the Hollywood Hills. So let's go much more further to this gigantic structure to see what's going on there. In fact, it experienced a long story in the history since 1919, and several constructions took place here to achieve the best goal of maximizing the performance of the stage. At the really beginning. The Theatre Arts Alliance Inc., with Christine Weatherill Stevenson as president, purchased the 59 acres in Boyton Canyon for $47,500, and this land becomes the site of the future Hollywood Bowl. At this time, the canyon is also known as Desi Dale, a popular picnic spot nestled in the Cahenga Pass. Then in 1922, the bow's first stage consists of a simple wooden platform with a canvas top. Patrons sit on movable wooden benches. As time elapsed to 1924, a backdrop is added to give the stage a more completed look. The stage is embellished with classical designs, including Greek columns, pergolas, and urns. In 1926, Allied Architects an Association, founded in 1921, provided governmental organizations with professional architects at a reasonable cost, create the boat's first arched proscenium stage. The wooden frame consists of a low elliptical arch with a circular arch inside. The shell creates more acoustical problems than it solves, which leads to its renovation at the end of the season. The construction of a permanent seating area and stage facilities is completed. Later on, Pasadena architect and Rose Bowl designer Myron Hunt creates an elliptical form for the Hollywood Bowl seating and field theater. His layout features monumental stairways that reinforce the seating area's dramatic balloon shape, which has been described as being poised to fill with music and ascent. Lord Wright, the son of Frank Lord Wright, is commissioned to design sets for several theatrical productions at the Bowl. He is subsequently commissioned to design shell for the 1927 season. Lord Wright's pyramid-shaped design becomes one of the most distinct and controversial shells built. Till 1928, the Hollywood Bowl Association gave Lord Wright instructions to design a semicircular shell and tackle the dial issues of acoustics and aesthetics. The shell consists of nine concentric segmented arches which can be tuned panel by panel. The shell is at the forefront of the streamlined modern movement and is an acoustic success. In 1929, designed by the engineering firm of Elliot Bowen and Vaughts and built by Allied Architects, the new 55-ton shell becomes an architectural icon. The massive shell is mounted on rails which allow it to be moved by tractors. Although the shell is ultimately replaced due to issues with acoustics and the deterioration, the gracefully curved form becomes a signature shape of the bow shell. By looking back to our three spots today, we should have a broad view to the historical building structures and typologies in Los Angeles. The structure system tested and used by Frank Lord Wright made the Freeman House to be a historical landmark among the local residential house type. At the meanwhile, it's interesting those Highland Camrose bungalows village were being built almost at the same period as the Freeman House during 1918 to 1923, 
which are the wood frame dwellings. A rustic village remained that way for decades. So it is a really fascinating way to interpret both of them from their structure component system from the same period and comparing their conservation on historical approaches. Well, when we moved there to the Hollywood Bowl, every step being put forward during its construction, whatever the seats or the stages, could attract our attention since it is another way to comprehend the beauty of structure based on the need of the program's change. Thank you all guys for your visiting with me today. Our audio guide ends here. Have a nice day. Bye bye.